worst news imaginable came out this morning. You see it right on screen. Adrian Wojnarowski had the report that Donovan Mitchell, yeah, he is extending with the Cleveland Cavaliers on a three-year, $150 million deal. Includes a player option for the last year, so maybe he could opt out in two years. But at least for the time being, it's Jover. Um, optimism, not high. Um, I'm going to be honest. Like, you want to get a morale check on Nick Roloff, a.k.a. Roley? It's, it's, not, it's not good. This is a sad, sad day. It's a bad day. Just don't know where Miami goes from here, to be honest. Like, I know it was always going to be a long shot to acquire Donovan Mitchell anyway, but my delusional ass, as I said on yesterday's video, believed that it was going to be a possibility. And now the Heat and Pat Riley have to look elsewhere to try to improve this roster, if they even want to improve this roster. They might not want to. And, uh... That's a different conversation for a different day. But make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Because even though it's not good in Miami land right now, we aren't going anywhere. Make sure you're subscribed to get the latest updates on the Miami Heat. We're on the road to 13K subs. I want to do it for Bam at a bio. I want to get there soon. We're also going to have Summer League Watch Party setting up, starting up in a week as well. So join the channel. But the reason why I want to talk about Donovan Mitchell at the top of today's show, because, well... Most of you know that was my number one target for the Heat this offseason to try to improve this team in the short term as well as continue to build for the long term. But what's next for Miami? How do they go forward building this team to try to compete now in the Jimmy Butler window but also try to preserve their future? Well, I put out this tweet yesterday morning, and I will stand firm on this take. If the Heat don't make a move for Donovan Mitchell, Laurie Marketing, Trey Young, or Brandon Ingram, then it is time to trade Jimmy. I don't want to run it back. The East has gotten way too good. The Sixers, the Celtics, the Knicks. Like, you can't compete with your current roster. And with Donovan Mitchell scratched off this list, it's now down to these other three names for the Heat to try to make that move if they want to continue to try to contend in the Eastern Conference. And I think the logical name that we're going to point to next is Laurie Marketing because I think he is the most likely to be dealt potentially. I do think it's pretty high that Brandon Ingram gets traded this offseason, but Brian Windhorst had the note that the Spurs and Warriors have been among the teams to check in for Laurie Marketing, and rival executive believes there's a good chance the Jazz actually move Laurie this offseason. Now, the Heat were not mentioned, but... The Heat should be interested, and if marketing is actually on the table and the Jazz will receive and take offers and have conversations, then this is where Miami should probably go next. But if there is one thing that is absolutely certain on the Miami Heat is that they need to shake up this roster, preferably a trade to upgrade the team around Jimmy and Bam. But if there is no deal out there in the form of a Brandon Ingram, a Trey Young, a Kyle Kuzma, a... Lori Marketing, you have to deal one of Jimmy or Tyler. Like, Tyler Hero's value is only going to continue to decline as his role on this team goes down. And I think he has continued to be exposed as not someone who can be a top three team on a championship contending roster. So his value is going to go down. Jimmy Butler's value is only going to go down as he gets older. And he potentially could opt out of his contract next year because he has a player option and test free agency. Like, you can't let him go for nothing, and you can't compete in the Eastern Conference right now. So, like, the Heat are in a spot where they can't contend in the East, but they're not good enough to tank and get a top five or top seven pick. Hell, even a top ten pick. They might be a playing team again and be the eighth seed for the third straight year and get bounced in the first round. Like, you just simply, as you are currently constructed, compete with these three teams. And I know there are going to be some positive and optimists out there that say, well, the Heat were injured, blah, blah, blah. We didn't see this team fully healthy last year of a hero, Terry, Jimmy, Bam, with Jokic and, or, and Jokic, Jovic and Hakez. Well, I don't care. Like, with the Sixers adding Paul George and getting Andre Drummond and adding Eric Gordon, the Knicks getting Mikael Bridges, bringing back OG Ananobi, Boston Celtics are the reigning champs, and they looked absolutely unstoppable last year. Like, you simply cannot contend with these three teams in the East. At best, best, you are the fourth best team in the Eastern Conference. But the realistic outlook on this team is you're probably getting passed up by the Orlando Magic as they continue to improve. They got KCP. 
what does Milwaukee end up doing? Like, you are going to be in those range of, at best, five through eight. Like, this is not where Miami should be. Indiana's coming back better than ever as they look to improve as well. Like, the Heat are not in a good spot right now, and they need to shake up this roster for better or for worse, but they can't continue to run it back because it will not net them anything positive. Or do you agree with me? Do you think Miami can compete with their current roster? Type Y for yes or type N for no. And by the way, those three teams in the East, that's if you get out of the Eastern Conference. That even not, it's not even mentioning the Timberwolves who are improving, the Thunder, the Nuggets. Like These guys aren't even being mentioned, and you have to just worry about the East. My goodness. All right, Laurie Markkinen is the first player that I do want to talk about, though, as someone the Heat could possibly go after to try to improve. Because he is a surging player in the NBA. Ever since being dealt in that Donovan Mitchell trade between Utah and Cleveland, his career has really taken off, averaging 25 and 23 in back-to-back -back seasons. And as a seven-footer, Laurie Markkinen is seven feet tall, moving the way he does offensively, scoring at all three levels, and shooting 39% from the three and 50% from the field, this is one of the most versatile and dynamic offensive players in the NBA, and he's able to grab eight rebounds a game as well. And with his ability to continue to improve and refine his offensive game, I am absolutely willing to ship the house to get Laurie Market in. And I know the Heat fans have been looking to pair up size with Bam and well, you got Kalel Ware now in the draft. Jovic, year three. Like, I get there's optimism of in-house pieces being able to give you what you need around Adebayo now. But there is nothing more certain than Laurie Markin and Bam being maybe the best front court duo in the entire NBA. And for that reason, I'm fine shipping the house. I am. Tyler Hero, Hakez Jovic, and your 2031 first-round pick that becomes available. You send Hero, who has probably still worth the first, Hawkins is worth the first, Jovic is worth the first, and then an unprotected in 2031. So you're ultimately sending four first-round picks in value, maybe even a little bit more if Hawkins is valued at more, and potentially Jovic as well, to get Laurie Market in. And the crazy thing is about this, by the way, the Jazz might still say no. Like, even though they're expected to take calls and listen, I do think there's a chance they want more. Like, if the Golden State Warriors are actually interested, they can offer Jonathan Kaminga, and Kaminga would be the best young player, in my opinion, out of any of the guys that we have. Like, he's better than Hero because he's still ascending. He's younger, better defensively, better in terms of being an athlete. Like, I would take Kaminga more, and they can maybe offer two or three first-round picks in Golden State. Like, their offer could be better than Miami. So there is a realistic chance that the Heat can't even acquire Laurie Marketing with their package. Now, I will say this. I think that package you just saw on screen is actually really good for a star player. Like, I think, in on a Heat's perspective, I would not offer anything more than that. And some of you down below in the comments section will probably say that this is too much to offer for Marketing because you guys want to keep Jovic and Hakez, which I understand want to see them blossom. But if you have any acclamation and want to win in the next two years with Jimmy and Bam, like, this is a move that must be considered. And we're going to break it down on the channel. We also have a July sub battle. We are turning into a new month, and we are battling the Knicks in the month of July. We got off to a hot start. Appreciate all the real ones that subscribed to the channel on yesterday's video and joined us for our live show as well to start off the month. 91 subscribers on July 1st. That's electric. Knicks only got 82. So we're off to a hot start, but let's continue to push and beat the New York Knicks in our July sub battle. All right, Trey Young is the other option that we must talk about, and... This one's growing on me, if I'm going to be honest. It very well could be because I am just desperate for a move. But I'm fine with Trey Young as well. And shout out to Brendan Tobin, who is the a figurehead in the Miami media landscape. Starting this hashtag, and it's kind of cold, if we're going to be honest. Trey 05, like that's tough. Get it? Heat 05, Trey 05. Like, that's kind of tough. I'm kind of with it. And even though I was kind of out on Trey Young and I've been skeptical of his defensive fit in Miami, he would be an offensive juggernaut for the Miami Heat. There is no denout or doubting that, right? You just simply don't find too many players or in the association that are able to average 25 points a game on a consistent basis, but also give you nine and 
basically 10 assists a game as well. Sure, the efficiency is questionable, and he does a lot of work from the free throw line in terms of getting those points per game up, but he would be the best offensive player on Miami without a question, and the pick and roll between Trey and Bam would only elevate the two of them. Trey would be able to get more open looks running as a ball handler for my, or for or with Bam at a bio, and Bam would get more looks as well at the rim and because they'd have to blitz Trey and get more lobs from Young. like it, They would work very well side-by-side side offensively. The defensive question is the, or is the defensive fit is the question there. But I will say this with Trey Young. He would be cheaper to acquire than Laurie Markkinen because his value just isn't as high because of those defensive questions. Now, it does remain to be seen if Atlanta would even question or like, talk a Trey Young trade because they already traded DeJounte Murray. Are they blowing it all up? Are they going a full rebuild? Or are they trying to retool around Trey Young? That's the question that we have to see and get answered. But this is what a projected trade would look like in my eyes for Trey Young. Tyler Hero would still be on the deal. And the fit makes sense now. Now that they officially decided that DeJounte Murray is gone as well, they do need a lead guard, so if they are trading Trey Young, Tyler Hero would be a good person to do that. They get Duncan Robinson, kind of needed to be the, in this deal to match salary. And they also get Nikola Jovic. Heat send out no first-round picks in this deal. They send out Hero, Duncan to match salary, Jovic to be the headlining young guy that you could potentially really look to build around and add to that wing repertoire they have. And a 2022 second, second-round pick, or 2026 second-round pick, via the Los Angeles Lakers. I think this is fair value for Trey Young. The Heat keep all their picks. They keep Jaime Hawkins Jr., but add Trey Young to the roster. If you had to pick a trade target for the Miami Heat, which one would it be? After seeing what my perceived notion of their trade value would be and what Miami would have to offer, you saw their stats on screen, you know the fits, we've talked about them in depth. Which one would you rather go after when you take in the fact cost and uh, what you'd have to give up. Type LM for Laurie Marketing or TY for Trey Young. I'm probably going Laurie Marketing. And even though you'd have to give up Jovic and Hakez in that deal and a first round pick, he is about as perfect as a four as you could possibly try to find to fit next to Bam at a bio. And hell, Laurie Marketing's bigger. You can argue he would be your center and Bam would be your four. But either way, it would work out perfectly because of the offensive and defensive fit between those two. Also, an unrelated and really not talked about no, if you did make that deal that we showed for Lori Marketin, you would free up $17 million in cap space, which if you made that move in the next week or so, you could use that 17 mil to re-sign one of Haywood Highsmith or Caleb Martin. So you'd also be able to bring one of them back as a guarantee as well. So to me, there are benefits to each of these deals, but Lori, I think, is an ascending player who isn't a slouch defensively and gives you the same amount of points per game production. Not the playmaking, but it gives you size, rebounding, shooting, and a little bit of defense as well. So I'm probably leaning Laurie. All right, make sure you are following me on Twitter at Nick underscore Roloff. I'm talking Heat basketball every single day. I really am. So you can share your sorrows with me. You can share your excitement. We talk it all over on my Twitter. So go give me a follow, and I'll see you on a video tomorrow. Go Heat.